Okay, so in this part of the unit, we're going to look at the very simplest uh, setup, which is our capacitor charging equation. So there are actually going to be two possible functions we could use to solve the differential equations involved here. Uh, both live in scipy.integrate module. So solve IP is the currently supported, um, currently being developed version of the function. That stands for solve additional value problem. Um, and there's also an older version of a function which is called um, ODE int. So uh, both give you good results. Um, solve IVP is a little bit more flexible, um, can do slightly more things, um, whereas ODE int certainly has more examples on the internet. So if you go and look online and do a search for solve differential equations with Python, you'll probably see examples using ODE int. But both equations give you very, um, uh, so they give you essentially the same results and they're, they're both relatively straightforward to use and in fact very similar to use. Okay, so uh, returning to our circuit diagram, um, we've got our voltage source, we've got our resistor, we've got a capacitor, um, and we've got a switch to turn it on and off. Uh, and we could write down the differential equation for this system, as we saw in the last part of this uh, unit, um, just as dQ dt is the voltage over the resistance minus the charge over the resistance times the capacitance. And if we start by assuming that time equals zero, the, uh, char the capacitor is discharged and therefore Q of zero is zero. And that's our boundary condition for solving our differential equation. So to use either of these functions that we're gonna to use to, to solve um, uh, this differential equation, we need to supply it with various bits of information. So the first thing we need to go and do is we need to supply these functions with a model function. So this is something which describes our differential equations. So this needs to take in a, um, uh, some value of the state variable, which in our case is, is just the charge Q, um, and also take in um, times at which you need to evaluate uh, the model function. So a set of times, uh, that could be an array. Um, and it should also take in um, any additional uh, constant arguments. So in our case, that's going to be Vs, the supply voltage, the resistance, and the capacitance. Uh, and then the function should return a value for the time derivative of the state variable. So in other words, the Q dot. So what it's doing in our system of differential equations is it's basically evaluating the right-hand side of that equation. Uh, then to solve the problem, we need to uh, supply the routines with an idea of what times we're interested in evaluating the, the charge at, the state variable at. Um, and we also need to supply the initial values of the state variable. So in other words, we need to say that it starts off with no charge at t equals zero. Um, the only difference between using the two functions is that by default, ODE int when you write this model function wants the state variable first and the time second and solve IVP it's the other way around. Uh, but actually ODE int has an extra uh, keyword parameter that says no in this case the model function has time first. Um, and then they both uh, return values which allow us to inspect the or to figure out the state variable the charge um, at the times we've asked for. Okay, so for our um, example here, a very simple model function that we can use with solve IVP is going to look as simple as this. So uh, we call it by passing in the time, the charge, uh, and then it also takes the resistance, the capacitance, and the supply voltage, and it simply returns the right-hand side of the equation as we've, we've given it. And that's all it needs to do. Um, for, um, as I said, for ODE int, we'd either swap the T and the Q around, or you could pass the uh, T first equals true keyword parameter, in which case it would work with the same function. So we then need to set up the values for the other constants. Um, so uh, in this case, I'm just going to pick 2.2 um, microfarads as our capacitor charge. I'm going to specify 100 kilo ohms for the resistor, and I'm going to say I'm running this off a 9 volt battery. So the next thing we need to go and do is we need to work out the ranges of times over which we're going to go and um, follow the charging of the, of the capacitor. Um, and we also need to specify that initial charge of the capacitor. 
So for the times, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a linearly spaced array from zero to five seconds with 101 data points. And for solve IVP, what I actually need to go and tell this is what the start time and the end time is. So I just um, uh, set up this T range, which is a, a tuple of two elements. So the minimum time and the maximum time. Um, and then the other thing I set up is the um, initial charge. Uh, that's Q underscore zero. Um, now that needs to be a, a list or an array. Um, and we'll see later, this is because it's designed to work with a whole series of different equations where uh, coupled equations, but we've only got one equation, but it still wants it to be a list. So I've just made a list of one element, which is zero. Um, and then we're ready to go and um, uh, call solve IVP to go and solve this problem. So here's the call. Um, we're going to collect it into the variable result, whatever happens, solve IVP. Um, uh, and then um, we're calling it with the name of the function, um, the uh, time we're, we're using, um, and then the uh, Q0. I'm afraid the spaces here should be underscores. That seems to be a little display issue. Um, and then I pass it its args keyword, where I'm going to pass it the other arguments it needs to go and call for the function. So the resistance R, the capacitance C, and the supply voltage. And then the final parameter um, is uh, an optional parameter um, that uh, tells it how to actually go about doing the calculation. Um, the, the one I've shown here is um, a reasonable one to use if the default doesn't work. So if you try it uh, without the method equals parameter and the results look a bit weird, try uh, calling it with method equals ls oda and, um, or else oda, however you want to say it, and uh, it may well work better. So um, uh, this is very similar if you look at it to how you'd call something like um, the scipy optimize f min, where you pass it in a, a function, in this case it's our model function, and the args keyword parameter, uh, and so on. As I say, the, the, um, the method is a, a, um, is a way of fine tuning how it's working. If the default doesn't work, then um, try something like the LS soda. Okay. So then uh, what solve IVP returns back to us um, is a special solver result um, thing object. So this basically has a whole bunch of useful information about your result, um, the values of the state variable, the Q. Um, uh, it also has um, the, um, uh, uh, the corresponding times at which the state variable has been calculated for. And it includes information about the number of times calculation was evaluated and whether it succeeded or not, and so on. Um, so what you get back in this result.y, where the state variable is, is actually a 2D array. Um, again, because everything is designed to work with multiple differential equations. In this example, we're just using one differential equation. And so it's a 2D table with only one row, uh, which is the result for the first differential equation. Um, but we still need to go and tell it we want the first row. Um, and so we can just go and again make a little plot of the results here. So here I'm just plotting the um, result.t, which is the times it, it evaluated the function at, and um, result.y0, so in other words, the first row of the results table, which is the, the value of the charge. Um, and what you can see here is that um, it's evaluated the, the charge at various points. You notice that the spacing of the points that evaluated the charge is not even. And that's because as it was solving the equation, it realized it didn't need to look as um, often in time as it got uh, further on in time because the, um, uh, the, the, the charging was getting more and more stable. The total range of time we've uh, controlled with the T underscore range parameter, but it's picked the times to go and evaluate the function at. Um, now, um, if we don't want to go and do that, if we want to go and work it out at other times than it's picked, there are two ways we can go about doing that. We can either pass it a T underscore eval keyword argument with a list of times to go and, and use, um, or alternatively, you can set the dense output equals true keyword parameter, and that will then return an interpolation function, which you can then pass any times you like, and, and it will give you the same answers. 
So um, here you can see doing that, I've now um, changed the, the call to solve IVP. I've added in the uh, times that we're um, wanting to evaluate at. That's just our, our T array. And I've also, for good measure, told it I want the dense output. Um, I can do one or the other. I don't have to do both, but I'm going to do both just so I can show you they, they both work. Um, so then I'm going to make a new figure. And because I've passed it, the T of L is a set of times. Result.t is now those times I told it to go and evaluate at. Um, and therefore, result.y contains the uh, charge at those times I told it to go for. Um, equivalently, the result.solve is something I can call by passing it an array of times. Um, it will return a, a table of um, results, of which I want the first row because I'm looking at the first row in Y. Um, and I can plot that against the time the times in my time array. Um, and what you can see here is that those are, in fact, exactly the same thing. So I get exactly the same answers, no matter which way around I do it. OK, ODE int um, is very, very similar to use. Um, so the only difference really is that um, you don't pass it a, time, a T range or a range of times. You just pass it the times you wanted to evaluate at. And it automatically uses the uh, LSODA um, method. Um, it doesn't have any options to do anything else. The reason you might want to do something else is that um, LSODA can be a bit slow sometimes. It, it's, it, it tends to be relatively robust and careful, but at the expense of being quite slow. If there's some problems, you can find that um, solve IVP can be faster if you use one of its other methods. Um, so there's the call to it. Um, it it's, um, also doesn't return the same results object. It, it returns just the, just the solutions. Um, uh, and so um, what you get back is just a 2D array. Um, again, rather confusingly, this time round, it's the columns that correspond to each equation and the rows correspond to the times. So um, when you come to plot it, you need to uh, pull out the, um, the columns of Q in order to plot. And if I plot now the results from using solve IVP and using ODE int, you can see they're very nearly the same. They're not quite the same. There's a slight, particularly um, at the shorter times, there's a slight difference in values, but it's, it's really very, very close. And you can pretty much see if you drew a smooth line through those, you'd be drawing the same line um, for both the red dots and the blue crosses. 